Hi, good morning. My name is Shalini Sila, currently working in Saudi Aramco as a training coordinator for three years. My main tasks are providing training in-house and out-of-the-company trainings. Trainings that is required for the employee in our department as part of their developmental to be able to be competent enough in a competitive world of economy. In addition to my job, I'm also working as a backup in HR, assisting all the newly hired and all related HR matters. I choose the report week 12 case exercise and are five heads better than one, as somehow they are correlated to each other in a way as week 12 case exercise is more on leadership and power. If we have the power and leadership, we would be able to build a team in which explain the second topic, which is our five heads better than one. The topic is dealing more on working as a team, how individuals are involved to provide more details, having a good leader and a proper use of power. My report approach is more on answering the questionnaires provided by each exercise some of the some of the event scenarios to explaining the scenarios as say required. The first chosen topic is about power and politics. Based on the question provided, let's first define the leadership and power and its contrast. Contrast leadership and power. Define leadership. People follow because they wanted to. On the other hand, people follow you because they have to. People refers to the possession of authority and influence over others. Power is a powerful tool depending on how it's used. It can lead either positive or negative outcomes in an organization. Define the vibe basis of power. What are the vibe basis of power? Based on my research, according to American sociologists Jen French and Betterman Raven, they are legitimate, expert, referent, coercive and last reward power. They are defined as follows. Legitimate power is a power also known as a positional power. It's derived from the position a person holds in organization hierarchy, job description. The, for example, the required junior workers to report to managers and give the managers to assign duties to their junior. For that positional power to be exercised effectively, the person wielding it must be deemed to have earned it legitimately. An example of a legitimate power is that held by a CEO. Next is expert power. It's a knowledge kind of power. Expert is derived from the possessing of knowledge or expertise in a particular area. Such people are highly valued by organizations for their problem solving skills. People who have expert power perform critical tasks are therefore deemed indispensable. Second one is the referent power. This is a power derived from the interpersonal relationships that are a power cultivated in other, other people in the organization. People possess reference power when others respect like them. Referent powers arises from charisma as the charismatic person influences others via the admiris, admirations, respect, trust, and others for. Referent power is also derived from the person's connections, that the person has the key purple in the organization's hierarchy, such as the CEO. It is the perception of the personal relationship that, that, has the, that generates her power over others. The next one is the coercive power. It is a power that's derived from a person's ability of influence other via threats, punishment, or sanction. The last one is the reward power. It is a kind of power arises from the ability of a person to influence the allocation of incentives and in organizations. These incentives include the salary increments, positive appraisals, and promotion. In an organization, people who wield reward power tend to influence the actions of their employees. Reward power, if used well, greatly motivates employees, and the other hand might be negative. But if the applied truth of evolution, reward power can greatly demoralize employees and diminish their output. The, class, the, the question number three is that clarify what creates dependency in, our pow, uh, in a power relationship. What creates dependency? It's the importance, scarcity, sustainability. 
What are the nine influence tactics and their contingencies? Ways individuals translate powers into specific actions. Legitimacy, rational persuasion, inspirational appeals, consultation, exchange, personal appeals, ingratiation, pressures, coalition. Question 5 is explain how sexual uh, harassment is about the abuse of power. Sexual harassment are the unwelcome advices, advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature. Sexual harassment is about power. Describe the importance of political perspective. Political perspective. The basic premise of political perspective is that organization behavior is a function of competition for scarce, scarce sorry, resources. Resources are limited into money, status, control, and influence. List the individual and organizational factors that stimulate political behavior. Factors contributing to political behavior are individual factor, organizational factor. Individual factor is defined at the individual level. Researchers have identified certain personality traits, needs, and other favors that are likely to be related to political power. In terms of traits, we find that employees who are high health monitors possess an internal locus of control and have a high need for power are more likely to engage in political behavior. The high self monitor is most is more sensitive to social causes, exhibits high levels of social conformity, and is more likely to be skilled in political behavior than the low self-monitor. Individuals with an internal flow of custom control because they believe they can control the environment are more prone to take proactive stance and attempt to manipulate situation in their behavior. Organizational factors are political activity is probably more on more a function of organizations' characteristics than an individual differences. Because many organizations have a large of employees with individual characteristics, yet the extent of the uh, behavior varies widely. Explain how defensive behaviors can protect an individual's self-interest. These individual organizations tend to either avoid actions or avoid blame. They avoid actions because they believe sometimes the best action to take is no action at all. And use difference of defensive behavior. Some of these defensive behaviors are stalling, of, overconforming, backpassing, playing dumb, and they're per depersonalizing. What, what are the defensive behaviors? As mentioned, we'll define first stalling. Stalling is taking a lot of time to take an action. It is done hoping that demand for cooperations may disappear. The civil service bureaucracy is infamous for stalling on demands from acting government. Overconforming. Overconforming is strictly sticking the agenda of the job in a common way to avoid action. Backpassing. Some, some else does the assignment for you. This is most frequently exercised by the politicians because they worry that assignment might not be turned out successfully. Playing dumb, lowered level organizations, members use this tactic to avoid the taking actions. They claim to lack expertise about the particular matter. Second from the least, second from the last is the depersonalizing, viewing those making demands as number or objects in an easy way to put it taking an actions. Buffing, the organization's documents informed by showing that an appropriate course of action was followed. An act, uh, organization can uh, become dysfunctional if it takes a form of fabricating documentation. Justifying. Organization tries to justify the action after the fact. The last questions, I think, uh, second to the last question, I think, is to identify seven techniques for managing the impressions one makes on others. There are conformity, excuses, apologies, self-promotions, flat favors, and association. Let's define each individual techniques. Conformity, uh, it's uh, agreeing with someone else's opinion in order to gain his or her approval. Uh, for example, a manager tells his boss, you are absolutely right for your organization's plan for Western Regional Office. 
I couldn't agree with you more. So that's the example for conformity. Might the scenario. Excuses. Explanation of predicament creating event at minimizing the apparent severity to the predicament. One of the examples is a sales manager to boss. We failed to get the ad in the paper, paper on time, but no one responds to those ads anyway. So, that's excuses. Apologies, admitting responsibility for an undesirable event and simultaneous, simultaneously seeking to get a pardon for the section. Like for example, a statement like, I'm sorry, I made a mistake on the report, please forgive me. The, uh, the fourth is the self-promotion. It's a highlighting one's best qualities, down paying, playing one's deficits, and calling attention to one's achievements. A salesperson tells the boss, Matt, work access unsuccessfully for three years tried to get that account. I sued it up in six weeks. I'm the best closer this company has. So you have to you self proclaim. Flattery. Um, complimenting others about their virtues in an effort to make oneself appear perceptive and likable. A new sales training peers, you handled a client complaint so tactfully. I could never have handled that as well as you did. So it's a flattery compliment, complimenting your colleague. Favors, doing nice for someone to gain the person's approval. Salesperson to prospective client, I've got two tickets to the theater tonight that I can use. Take them, take them. Consider it, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Association, uh, the last one is association. Enhancing or protecting one's image by managing information about people and things which are is associated. Of one of the example is a job applicant says to the interviewer, what a coincidence. Your boss and I are buddies during college. So that would be the association to stay enhancing and protecting one's image. Um, the last questions for that report is the least three questions that can help determine if a political action is ethical. First question is what is the utility of engaging in politics? Sometimes we engage in political behaviors for little good reasons. For example, uh, for example, which I found some from my research is a major league basketball. It's Al Martin claimed that played football as uh, our USC when the fact that he never did. It's like claiming that he did because Martin was playing baseball, not a football. There was a little to be gained by his life. Outright lies like this may be the rather extreme example of impressions management. But many of us this this distort um, distorted information to make favorable impressions. The point is that before we do so, one one thing to keep in mind is whether it's really worth to risk. Is it's really worth to risk? <clears throat> uh, what I'm saying is that this is these things are happening always in a celebrity way of life. The second question is how does the utility of engaging in political behavior balance out any harm, potential harm? it will do to others. <clears throat> Let's give an example. It's a complimenting a supervisor on his or her appearance to carry favor is probably much harmful than grabbing credit that is deserved by others. So usually we, when we encounter our supervisor, we're always giving them compliment, they are giving complimentation, we're giving a praising, just to deserve for, the, for, the gra for grabbing the credit. Does the political activity, con the last question is, does the political activity confirm to standards of equality and justice? Sometimes it hurts to weigh the costs and benefits of political actions. It is ethical, eth ethically, uh, but it is ethically clear. The department head who inflates the performance evaluation of a favored employees and inflates the evaluation has a disfavored employees. And then who uses their evaluation to justify giving the former a big raise and nothing to latter has treated his favor, employee and fairy. That would be all for my report. So I'll be uh, discussing the next thing, which is the exercise. Are five better than one? The primary topic covered in this fictional case is uh, a group thinker with a broader focus on a group decision 
The case describes a team formed by Upper Management and an advertising company, which proposed a developing commercial for one of the firm's clients. X, we call them X, who assumed the develop uh, X assumed the, the role of a team leader, quickly gave his opinion, which turns out to be damaging. As a result of the conformity and lack of a strong uh, devil's advocates, no one disagree. So, the team agrees with the X, with the X idea. Thus, group think has occurred. In addition, the case details as X idea becomes even clearer as the team progresses implies that the group shift has occurred as well. The feeling of camaraderie that develops within the team suggests that the team is highly cohesive. Class discussions could focus on the way group think occurred within this team, what factors contribute to it, and what might have been done to keep it from occurring in the first place. The team can be characterized as a formal team, but more specifically, because the team is relatively autonomous and is responsible for seeing the project to the from the start to finish, it is better characterized as a self-managed team. One area of discussions could be the ways in which the design of the team contributed to its decision making. An additional topic embedded in the case in, a, uh, in case team composition. The team is described as relatively homogeneous. And the team members are all have similar characteristics in terms of age, tenure, and personality, which, reg which regards to the personality team members are described as friendly, and they are value getting along with others. It, it thus can be inferred that, that the team is comprised of relatively agreeable individuals, which can be related to the decision of, on group. Discussion could focus on how more heterogeneous team might have been performed and why such team might have performed differently. What factors to contribute to the poor performance of, uh, of the team? As a manager, would you have done to help the team perform better? The, po the focus, the factors, the factors that contributed for the poor performance of the team is lack of teamwork. It is not the group project because of the team leader think that in this and uh, injected this idea. The team just arranged on what the team leader suggested. I don't, uh, I don't find it as a group activity. So it's like an individual, a single thinker, shared the ideas, and everybody has, uh, ag uh, agreed. According to the case, the advert team was given a relatively high degree of autonomy. How might this autonomy has, uh, have contributed to the precise of the group thinking? At first, it's not even a group. It's not even a group. A group is defined as a different individual think and work together and work as a team. Teams can be either homogeneous or heterogeneous. How would you characterize the advert team? And how this, did this affect the team's creativity and performance? Team is considered uh, considered as heterogeneous. Character characteristic of a team should have follows clear and unity of purpose. People are free of expressing as well as their ideas. There is a disagreement and uh, it is viewed as good. Most uh, decisions are made at point where uh, there are a general agreement. The leadership of the group shift from time to time. What are what are some groups' decision-making techniques to, uh, that could be help reduce con, uh, conformity pressures and group think among the advert team? Uh, brainstorming it is the combinations of a group problem solving and, dis and discussion. It uh, it's work on the belief that the more number of ideas greater than possibility of having the solution to the problem that is acceptable to all. It start with a group in generating ideas, which are then analyzed with actions points based on the discussion. Nominal group technique in a nominal group technique, the team divides itself into a smaller group and general uh, and generates ideas quietly. Possible options are uh, noted down in writing. You know the other uh, the usual stuff. The, the the team members then discuss and vote the best possible choice. 
the choice that receives the maximum vote is accepted as a group decision. So multi-voting, it's a start with the number of rounds of voting which an individual cast her vote for the options that are shortlisted. The other, the other method is Delphi method. It is a method of decision making. The facilitator allows team members to individual brainstorm their ideas and submit their ideas anonymously. The other team members do not know the owner of the ideas. The facilitator then collects all the inputs and circulates them among the others for modifying or improving them. This is a process continuous until the final word, uh, the final decision is made. But I think for this kind of method, it's like you will not get any real credits for this kind of method. And then uh, the last one is the electronic meeting. Electronic meeting are uh, the usual as, as I mentioned. Uh, Electronic meeting, uh, the decision making process to take place virtually and help the it's with the help of the technology. So yet, uh, maybe particip participants type any message they want to convey, and this flashes on the screen of the participating members in a process that identity of the participants can be kept as a secret, and then they can vote their opinions without any uh, in inhibitions. Five questions is like, what are the different forms of communication could have been employed to improve the sharing of ideas among the advert team? How might this have affected its performance and satisfactions? There are four types of communication, of the visual, written, verbal, and nonverbal. How would you describe Kono's leadership style? Would you think this hasn't, if wasn't effective? Is what situation might Kono be an effective leader? We can define first what are the type of leadership that we have. Authoritarian leadership, paternalistic leadership, democratic leadership, and the lazy sphere leadership. What is authoritarian leadership? It's a style or autocratic leadership keeps strict, close control over followers by giving close regulations of policy procedures given the followers. The authorization leadership style or autocratic leaders keep strict close control over the followers by keeping close regulations of policies and procedures given to followers. Paternalistic leader is a word is by acting as a father figure thing by, by taking care of their subordinates as a parent would. It is a style of a leadership. The leader supplies a complete concern for his followers or workers. Third one is the democratic leadership. It's a style consists of a leader sharing the decision-making abilities with the group members by promoting interest of the group members and by practicing social equi equality. The last one is the laissez-faire leadership. It's a style where all the rights and power to make decisions is fully given to the worker. Guys, hopefully you find my report uh, kind of useful. I know I'm just um, it's very brief. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you, Miss Kabebini uh, Kabutahe, as uh, our professor, as a guide, as for guiding us, for giving us a chance to explore more information about the organizational behavior. And I just found that uh, the, all the GPS provided is very helpful in many ways. That I need to consult, that I even ra uh, rather to consult most of my colleagues in regards. To their point of view to be able to make sure my answers are fair and legitimate and considering all uh, at different sides of point of view again thank you and appreciate all the effort thank you guys